Hey everybody, welcome back to Dan Scale Model Creations. So, the last video that I did was how to weather a convertible top and make it look like it's been sitting out in the sun for uh, years and years and just decayed and rotted away. And uh, in that video I said I would uh, do a video if people wanted on how to uh, weather interior of vehicles. And uh, quite a few people came back and said yes, they would like to see that video. So, uh, that's what I'm going to do now for you. So, let's get started on that. So the first thing you're going to need is obviously a seat, an interior piece, whatever you're going to weather and uh, make look old. Um, this is basically going to be applicable to any type of fabric at all. Uh, so if it's a canvas top, if it's a cover over the roof of an old military truck, uh, seats like we're going to do now, or uh, anything else that's made out of cloth that you want to, uh, that you want to do. Um, so the first thing you're going to want to do is determine where the person would be sitting, so where their butt would be on the seat, and there you're going to want to put a hole. Um, I'm going to use a drill, so you guys can use whatever you want. If you have little hand drills or whatever, you can use that, but I'm just going to use this drill to put a hole. Chew it out a little bit so it's not completely round. Now I'm just going to take my knife and open it up a bit. So I'm just going to eat away on the edges with my knife. Nice new sharp knife. So you end up with something like that. Now I'm just going to clean up around the edges so that it's got a little bit of a bevel to it so it's not quite as sharp. And you can do this with a file or you can use your knife or whatever you're comfortable with, whatever you have. Okay, so now I have a hole in the seat right where the person's butt would be. So after that, you're going to want to put springs down um, underneath. So you have a, uh, a spring system in a chair. And if you, if you Google or, or do some reference uh, searches for images of uh, rotted seats or uh, seat, um, uh, seat components, you'll notice that there's springs underneath there. And to do that, what I'll do is I'll stretch some sprue. And stretching sprue is really simple, and it's an absolutely, um, you know, necessary technique to learn for uh, if you're doing any kind of scratch building for antennas or wires, or if you need to fill cracks or uh, anything like that. I'll use stretch sprue to fill in the uh, where the arm meets the body or the torso of uh, figures, um, just because it's easier to do that than it is to uh, to use putty and try to sand it all out. So all you're going to do is just cut a piece of uh, sprue off of a tree like that <clears throat> and then you're going to heat that up so you're just going to heat it up until it starts to bend and when you see it bending you know it's ready and then you just start pulling it out and it'll stretch just pull it slow Pull it slow and you'll see it start to get a little stiffer to pull. When that happens, just stop pulling and hold it straight. Now hold it straight for probably, oh, I don't know, 10 seconds or so. And you're, uh, you're giving it time to, uh, to harden and go back to its natural state. And it'll stay in that shape after that. 
So there you go. So now you've got a nice piece of stretch sprue. The nice thing about this too is that it has a tapered end on both ends. So if you are making an antenna or something, you can cut it off where it's a little bit thicker and then it'll taper to thinner and give you a nice antenna. Um, and obviously this glues much better than metal. So we're just going to cut this off. And then from here, we're going to make little springs for inside the hole. So I'm gonna see how big the hole is and I'm going to start cutting my pieces. I'll cut off both ends and that way it's not springing up in the air on me. So all I'm going to do is cut it, slide it along so that I'm cutting them all the same length approximately and I'll end up with a bunch of pieces. So that should be enough there. And then I always keep all of my stretch sprue pieces just in a little container that I have uh, in case you ever need them and uh, that way you don't have to go make any more. Okay, so now that I have the stretch sprue, we have to glue the springs to the bottom of the seat. And the easiest way to do that is obviously with super glue. Now, you can go a thousand different ways with super glue. You can go with expensive super glue like this. This is a gel type glue, which I'll use for um, really holding components in place when I put them on. You can go with your Tamiya super glues, fast drying, thin set, normal. Uh, those are about $8 a bottle. This stuff's probably about $12, $10 a bottle. Um, you can go with uh, crazy glues, or you can go with glues like that. I buy these at the dollar store. There's five of them in a little bottle and they're like a buck 25. I use these all the time. They're great glues and they work just as well as everything else that, uh, that I have out there for this type of application. So you're gonna wanna put glue on the inside of the seat. So along there and along the back. And then once you have that, you're gonna take your tweezers and just start setting your springs in line front to back like this and you can put them as close as you want whatever you think looks good for what you're building uh, there's no real right or wrong way to do this you're just doing what you think is going to look good So there we go. Now we got those in place. I'm just going to add a little bit more glue. Make sure everything stays nice and tight in place. And that's it. So there's what you end up with on the bottom. And that's what it looks like from the top. So you got just a couple little uh, strips running that way to give you a nice little spring look. Now what you can do is take and cut off the stretch sprue so that it fits into the hole. So you just want to measure it and get it so that they fit into the hole. There. 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 And there. So now that I have those little ones, you're just going to take them and you're going to set them right inside the opening. So again, you just add a little bit of glue. And just drop them in on top like that. Sorry guys, I find it hard to talk and explain when I'm trying to do some more detailed stuff. These need to be trimmed just a bit. Okay, 
So now, and you end up with uh, a cross hash uh, pattern, and that looks a little bit more like a spring. And then once the glue dries, you can start uh, start adding your um, tissue paper this stuff here so this is not tissue paper like you blow your nose in this is tissue paper that comes in gift bags and things like that uh, all i do is christmas time or birthdays i just gather it all up and throw it in a in a grocery store bag and keep it for whenever i need it but all you're going to want to do is cut yourself off a uh, a little section of it like that and then take your pva glue mixture uh, which is just PVA glue, white school glue, and water. And there really is no mixture to this. Uh, I just, if anything, I would say 50-50, 50% glue, 50% water. But all I do is I add the glue into the bottle, and then I just keep adding water until I get a, a milky consistency. And then once I have that, you can start applying the you can start applying the PVA glue to the seat. So just apply the glue to the seat, and you're going to want to do this on the entire seat. You don't want the seat to look weathered in one spot and one spot only. So once that's done, you just apply your tissue paper and get it on there good and you can just rip off any excess that you may have on there and this stuff's really forgiving so then just keep adding the glue and you're going to want this to be a little bit wrinkled up So then just push down through the hole where the hole is there and onto the springs. And then if you want to add a little bit more, you can add a little bit more to where the spring is. And this stuff's really forgiving. It almost turns into like a clay when you add the glue to it. So now I'm just going to push it into where the springs are. Like that. Wrinkle it up so it's all nice and old looking. Okay, and that's it. Put your put your brush in some water, and uh, you're good to go. So you'll end up with something that looks like that, and you're just gonna let that dry. And uh, I'll be back in well, a flash of a second, uh, but in real time, a uh, little bit because I gotta let this dry. Okay, so. There you go. That's what you end up with after it dries. And uh, you can either leave it like this, so you can kind of see where the uh, springs are underneath the material. Or what you can do if you want to make it look a little bit more realistic is you can get in there with your knife and actually lift the tissue paper up and open it up a bit. like I'm doing right here. See the way it kind of, it'll start to lift up off of things. And then you can really rip up that material and you'll end up with holes. So you'll end up with something that looks like that. And it looks like the material is still there. It's just ripped up and it's hanging up. So I've created a couple of, uh, of samples.
that are right here so you can see a black one so this one here has got holes right through it and uh, looks like it's extremely worn out and then I've got another one here that I painted up for you uh, that's a little more like the one that I just did so you can see the springs down the bottom of it there and uh, it's it's worn through this one here i just uh i spray paint it or i airbrushed with a uh, flat red tamiya flat red and then i just took and from above i sprayed a really light mist of tamiya flat black uh just to kind of give it a little bit more of a weathered look you could go back in this now and you could do a uh, dry brush effect with some bright red over the uh, creases and it, it kind of makes it pop a little bit more but there's just all kinds of things you can do and with a little bit of tissue paper um, you can do a lot of stuff you can make uh, such realistic looking tarps or flags uh, for your dioramas or um, things like the roof on this uh the little tarp that's hanging over the back tire there the interior there there's just endless amounts of things you can do with it when you use your imagination and just have fun and create things um uh, that that's really it for this video guys uh hopefully you, you learn something from it and you can use them on your uh your rusted rusted beat up old uh cars that you're building and um you know what, what's most important and what i always say is uh just keep building and have fun we'll see you in the next video